I've just passed 3,000 days in my hardcore world, so I think it's about time we take a look at everything that I've been building over the last year and a half. And there have been some awesome projects, most of which have required way more digging than I've ever done before, but the results have been worth it. So let's head inside the cave where it all began. Well, I guess the journey didn't start here exactly. I mean, spawn is about three, four thousand blocks away, but you guys get the idea. Anyway, welcome to my beautiful cave, which is where we did start building. Although I got to say it did take a lot of digging. There was a lot of stuff in the way. And then eventually, once we cleared the area, I built this beautiful cliff all the way around here and then built the starter house. Although I guess it is a little bit more than a starter house. It is a pretty big house, but you guys know me. I love my building. Anyway, let's take a look on the inside because this one does actually have an interior, which is pretty cool. So down here, we've got a pretty simple starting storage area, a little crafting area and a few furnaces and such just to kind of get me off to a good start. And if we head back outside and come just around the side, this leads us to a little walkway up to our doorway. And this is the main area of the base. Inside here, we've got a little seating area, a fireplace, a clock, a little enchanting area where we can get level 30. We got a little crafting area over here with some anvils and a few bits of storage, just some stuff from early game. A little table over the side here. And then of course upstairs we do have a nice little bedroom as we know how important they are for hardcore, especially early game. And if we head back downstairs, we do have a little balcony over in the corner here, just in time to catch the sun going down. So we got a nice view of the little harbor island and kind of part of the city as well. So yeah, we got quite a nice view from here. Heading back outside into the cave, we can just follow this little path down here. And this brings us out onto the cliff, which overlooks the um, harbor and stuff. And we got a nice build just on the cliff edge here. This is a pretty cool little build, but it doesn't have an interior at the moment. So if you guys have any ideas, please let me know in the comments because I'm uh, not really sure what to build in there just yet. But the one thing I really like about this house is just the way that it does sit on this cliff here, kind of sits into the cliff face up here and then we have this little cliff protruding around the edge here so it makes it look really cool we'll take a look from the outside a little bit later on back inside the cave there is honestly a ton of details i literally do not even know where to start we've got details from texturing more texturing on the ceilings we've even got some lights if you look just up here we've got a bit of string with moss carpet and then a light behind it and then all these blocks surrounding it are just normal moss blocks. So it's a cool way of adding a bit of light into the ceiling. Kind of hides it and uh, yeah, makes it look pretty cool. We got these lamps up in the ceiling as well, which are pretty nice. I like the way that they came out. Kind of a bit kind of Japanese or Oriental, but I don't know. They kind of just fit with the vibe inside the cave. That being said, there is a ton to see. So maybe we should just start at the front of the cave now that we've seen the starter house. So if we come just in the front here, we've got a little entrance over the side here. And then this pretty cool build over here, which I do really love the way this one sits into the uh, cliff here. This is again, another cliff face I built all the way around the edge here and then kind of built this house into it. So I think it looks pretty cool. But again, this is another empty build interior. So if you guys have any ideas what we could put in there, please let me know in the comments. To the side of it, we do have a little storage area, which I do think is pretty cool. And just to the side of that build in the cave here, we do have our skelly spawner, which is pretty cool. It's a pretty simple little farm, but basically we've got a spawner at the back there that basically sends the skeletons into a water stream. They go up here, across, and then they fall down in here. And then of course we can come in here, whack them, grab all of the XP, and then all the drops go down here so we can get tons of bones. So this was super handy early game, although I tend to use the mob farm now more than anything because it's, uh, it's a lot faster. And if we head down here, we have the farming area. And I've got to say, I absolutely love this section. So this is like a kind of dome sort of shape here, which is really cool. We've got an entrance on all four sides. One behind us here leads us to the skelly farm. We then have a sugarcane and cactus farm over there storage system at the back and the iron farm over here, which we'll take a look at them in just a moment. But if we take a look in the middle here, we've got a double stacked wheat and seed farm. So basically the farmer here will gather up the wheat. He will then replant it. And because there's not a villager in there for him to feed it to, he would just drop the wheat and the seeds on the floor. 
It will then get picked up by the um, hoppers underneath, into the water streams, and then into the storage system. Similar kind of idea for these farms is that these ones are run by a villager who is sleeping at the moment. But basically the beetroot farm here, he will pick up all of these once they grow. He'll try feeding them to the villager over here. There's a hopper minecart under him, which will take the items into a water stream and then into the system. Same for all the farms around the edge here. So over this side, we've got two beetroot farms. We have two carrot farms, two potato farms. And then all the way around this side, we have got another two carrot farms. So tons of crops in here. Over on this side here is the iron farm. So just as we come around here, you can see this is where the iron golems get killed just in time to see one come down. And then we've got all of our poppies on the side here just to kind of remember the fallen golems. So yeah, this is a pretty cool farm. We have an iron farm basically at each side. So we usually get two golems spawn around the same time. So yeah, it's a pretty effective farm. Over on the opposite side, we have our sugarcane and cactus farm. Now on here, we do have sugarcane on here and another sugarcane farm just behind it. The same on this side as well. So they are double stacks. We have like four sugarcane farms. So we get tons of drops and I get more cactus than I'm probably ever going to use. And of course, all those drops go down here into the storage system, which is set up with a bunch of streams. The streams all run basically to the center of this. They get pumped up in this item elevator across to the side here and then into the storage system. So over here, we have got a ton of seeds and this is probably almost full now. We've got wheat, we've got beetroot, carrots, potatoes, sugarcane, cactus, pumpkins. And the farm for this is just upstairs, but it is all connected to the same system. We've got poppies and our iron. So we have got space for tons of drops in here. So yeah, this is a super cool little farming area. Next up, let's head back inside the cave here. And first thing you can see is we've got another cool build just over here on the other side of this little kind of pond area. And I've got to say, I absolutely love this build. The way we got this little bridge coming across over here and then the pond at each side, all the greenery. I don't know, just saying about this build is really cool. I just love the way it sort of feels as you kind of wander across here. And recently I did upgrade this build. So inside here, we do have a pitcher pod and torch flower farm. Although I probably could do with a few more sniffers. I think there is about 10 in there so far. So I'll probably come back and do a bit of breeding at some point. But we get a decent amount of seeds from this one. So I can't complain. And if we continue around and start making our way up this little cliff edge here, you can see we've got this cool little house to the side here. I do love the way this one sits in with the kind of walkway here into this slope. I don't know, it just looks really cool. Now inside, there isn't an interior yet, but I think what I'm going to do in here is extend this through and create a second layer in the trading hall so that we have space for more villagers because there's a lot more trades that I still want to get and definitely a few brick masons as well because bricks are a pain to keep gathering and I do use them quite a lot. So it'd be handy to have a few masons on call. And if we keep heading further up here, we come to the Never Portal. And I've got to say, I do love this design. I think it fits in so cool with the environment. I added this big mushroom up here to add a bit of color. And then if we come over here and actually look through the Never, you can see it kind of looks like we can see the Never on the other side, which is a cool build that we've done to make it look like that. So on the outside here, we've got the tree roots coming across, a few bits of Never wall and whatnot for a bit of detail. And then if we head through the nether portal, we can come through. And on this side, we have a cool little nether here, which I think looks really cool. So over on this side here, we've got a crimson forest. Then we've got a warped forest. And if we actually turn around, you can see we've used the warped forest and crimson forest and kind of blended them together in this archway here. So yeah, I think this worked really cool. Now over on this side as well, we do have a kind of custom... I guess basalt delta biome that leads into a lava lake so a little bit of my own design here and then over on this side here kind of something similar but with the soul sand valley so it looks very similar similar kind of design but i think it looks pretty cool then of course heading across the bridge here we have got a really cool bridge design we have a couple of like prison cells just hanging on the sides well that's pretty cool and then of course we've got a kind of I guess never fortress slash bastion style build. 
Um, but yeah, it's kind of cool. You can come into the back here and come up the stairs first of all. We've got a little landing up here which could still be extended that way. There's nothing behind it. We've got a little balcony up here where we can overlook at everything, which is pretty cool. And then if we head back downstairs, we've also got a little balcony at each side. So we've got one over this side, which overlooks our biomes. But you get a pretty nice view. And then again, of course, we've got the same just on the opposite side. So again, it's a simple kind of build, really. It's nothing too crazy, but I think it works pretty nicely. And before we go, let me know if you have any ideas for this ceiling. Right now it is looking really boring, so I do want to come in and maybe add some glowstone and a bunch of ores. But I'm going to see if I can come up with something different because, um, yeah, I'd like to add a really cool detailed ceiling in here if possible. And that brings us back to the starter house. So let's head across the bridge over here and let's head over to the trading hall. Actually, before we do that, let's take a quick look up here at this custom amethyst geode cave. So we've got kind of like a little cave here. I've added in some of the calcite, a bunch of amethyst, a little bit of scaffolding around the edge here with some fences to look like a ladder so that you can climb up to it. We've got some of these crystals in the ceiling here and just a few little details just to make it kind of look and fit in the environment. So I think this was a cool little feature. It turned out pretty cool and just a bit of a change of color to kind of change things up because there is an awful lot of green inside this cave. Next up, we have the Villager Trading Hall. And I gotta say, I went for the Crimson Wood here. And I absolutely love the way it looks with the Dark Oak here. Um, it's not wood that I use very often, but I don't know. I think it really works well with this build over here. So I think I might have to make a habit of using that a little bit more often than I do. Heading on the inside here, we have got a few villagers for trading with. And this is a zombie curing system. So basically we can drop the villagers down, just pull the lever. A zombie will bite them, turn them into a zombie. You bring them up, cure them, and uh, you get super cheap trades. So we've got a few villagers in here. Um, I do think we need to extend it and add a few more villagers because we have got a few empty slots still. So I will be filling those up. And outside we have the bee farm where we collect both honey and honeycomb. So... This is a really cool farm. It gathers a ton of resources. And if we come around this side here, we've also got a cool view from this side. Kind of like the way that it fits into the cave wall. And if we head over the back here, we can access the redstone all of the back here. So if anything goes wrong, we can just come and check it all out here. Um, I do have some old storage that needs to be moved. And then there's a doorway here, which takes us into where the actual bees are. So I won't go in there. But yeah, if we come all the way around now, which leads us to this build just here, which I think is going to be a tavern. Again, it doesn't have an interior yet, but we do have storage in here for the farm. So we have a ton of honeycomb and then we have a bunch of honey bottles as well. So it's a pretty cool farm. And then over here, we can use these two to fill up either the bottles or the shears in the dispensers which uh, we can just basically top up. I haven't got no shears in there, but there's plenty for now. And then in here, I do need to make some kind of interior. So I might turn this into another tavern. Obviously, we'll have the upstairs as well. But um, yeah, if you guys have any better ideas, then please let me know in the comments. And if we head back down the cliff here, we're going to head to the other side of the bridge where we have the pumpkin farm, which is inside this really cool barn here. I gotta say there is something about this barn. I've built it a couple of times now in a few different worlds and I can't deny I do love the design. But on the inside here, we have two pumpkin farms, one on each side, which is really cool. And there's only a few spaces here. I mean, it doesn't look like a big farm, but I get way more pumpkins than I'm ever gonna need. So it works for me. And then up here, we do have a storage area just for detail more than anything. I mean, I don't really use this area. But I think it looks pretty cool. And if we just head around the corner of the barn here, we have this little build in the corner. Again, I don't know what to do with this build. There is no interior, but it's a small little build. And if we take a look just behind here, we've got a few pumpkins growing. We've got a little well. And I don't know, I kind of get like a little bit of a magical enchanting vibe here. So yeah, if you guys have any ideas, let me know what you think we should do with this house here as well. Because uh, at the moment, I'm still unsure on this one. And I think that's the last build inside the cave. So now we can head outside, follow this walkway all the way around. 
we have this cool little waterfall that comes all the way down here. I'll show you where that goes in just a minute. But if we head all the way to the top, this is where the castle is going to go. And I've got a huge plan for a castle. I'm still kind of messing around with the last few ideas for the build. But yeah, it's going to be massive. It's going to literally cover the whole of this mountain here. So it's going to be huge. So stay tuned for that one. That'll be coming very soon. So next up, I think we're going to take a little stroll around this island here because as you can see, there is definitely a few cool builds on this one. But before we do that, here is a little view of the outside of the cave. I mean, we've got our starter house just there. Then the one that we saw on the walkway, this little house over here. We've got all the detail in the path down here, which I think is really cool. It goes all the way around over here across this little bridge. And we've also got another house over here, which again, doesn't have an interior, but I'm probably going to use this as a farmhouse because over this side here is going to be a big farming village full of farmland, silos, barns, windmills. So yeah, there's going to be a bunch going on over here, which we'll be getting to very soon. But uh, first of all, there's the entrance from the cave that we came out and we walked around this little walkway here. We've got these cool little archways underneath it. And then the waterfall that I showed you, it runs all the way down there into this little area here. It then drops down into this area and then runs underneath the bridge into this area. So it's a pretty cool little stream. I thought that it worked out really nicely into the landscape here. Um, but yeah, overall, there has been a ton of work here on this cave alone. I mean, just look at all the texture on the outside. Honestly, I cannot even tell you how long this took me. I spent so long doing all this texturing and it was definitely worth it. I mean, it looks amazing on the outside, but I can't deny how much work it was. It was a lot. Heading on over to the island here, I gotta say this was a real fun project. So we started out by shaping up the island, kind of laying everything out, and it's kind of a bit of a fisherman's island. So most of the houses on here are like fishermen's houses and warehouses. So as we come over the bridge here, we do have a few little market stalls. We've got a little flower store over here. To the side here, we've got a little bakery, just a simple little house at the moment. It's nothing too much. We've got a gazebo over on the side here, which I don't know, maybe some bands can play some music or you can just come and chill out on there. But I don't know, it just fitted nicely on the island. So I kind of thought it was a cool little placement. Then we've got a bunch of details like trees and bushes and stuff and another market stall over here. We've got the bridge that will lead over to the farming area a little bit later on, which will lead to the farming village. Opposite the bakery, we have this little warehouse and there's nothing in there at the moment. So I think I'll come and decorate this a bit later on. And I think I'll probably turn it into a warehouse. Unless you guys have any better ideas, please let me know in the comments. But um, otherwise, I think maybe just a warehouse for here. And if we continue all the way over here, we've got this cool fisherman's house here, which I think is really cool. I do like this design. And then inside here, again, it does need an interior. I'm trying my best to get through them, guys. I really am. And then outside here, we got a cool little balcony where maybe you can come and do a bit of fishing and sit down and enjoy the sun. I don't know. But I think it's a pretty cool little build. And then outside here, we have another cool little build here. This is another little warehouse, which I think looks pretty cool. It's got a little bed here. I try to place beds around often as I can, just so there is somewhere to uh, sleep. But um, up here, as you can see, we don't have anything else up here. So I still need to do a bit more work on the interior here. But, you know, we got the basis ready, if you like. And down here, we have our little harbor area. So this is just a pretty simple little area. So let's start on this side here. We've got a little market stall here selling some loot from the ocean. We've got a little merchant boat around here. We've got some fishing nets. The boat here is pretty simple. There's not really too much to it, but it's a little fishing boat. You can see we've got a fishing net on one side, a few little bits of storage. So nothing too much going on really over here. And we can get a better look at the fishing net there. So yeah, it's a simple boat, but it works. And then if we turn around, we have got ourselves another little warehouse. Again, unless you guys have some better ideas, I will turn this into a warehouse. But yeah, if you have any cool ideas, let me know in the comments. We got a cool little market stall over here. This is selling again a bunch of fish. It's a little bit bigger this one, but um, yeah, we've got quite a few little market stalls selling fish. But then again, this is a fishing harbor. 
Over here, we got some storage, a little fisherman's house, a bunch of fishing nets, another market stall here selling, yep, you guessed it, fish. And then over here, we do have a ship. Well, not quite a ship. This is still, still a boat really in size, but we got a bit of storage, a little area down here to sit and chill out, a bit of shelter as well. And then you got this little landing area up here and an area that takes you up to the crow's nest at the top there. So yeah, it's a simple, simple bow, but I think it turned out pretty cool. And it's always nice to stand back and get a nice old view of how everything looks. So yeah, you can get a kind of good idea of the layout of everything from here, which is pretty cool. So there's our little island there, along with the boats, the little harbor dock and everything else, which uh, yeah, I think it looks pretty cool. So next up, we're going to head to the city. And I got to say, just even from down here, I love this tower here. It just looks so cool, kind of in a perfect spot. So yeah, one of my favorite builds, I think that one is. As we come walking around here, again, a bunch of details with the trees, the pond and all the foliage. We got this little cliff that comes all the way around. And then as we come up here, I love this little walkway here. We got this little house on the side. This archway here with the leaves and stuff. And I don't know, it just feels really cool walking underneath here. Here we do have another little build with a little tower. This one doesn't have an interior again. Um, I assure you guys, we do have some builds of interiors, but uh, the majority at the moment haven't been. But let's head up the hill because this is where our interiors kind of start. So first of all, we have got the wood or tree farm, if you like. And uh, in here, we have got a nice little warehouse. I think this looks pretty good, showing off the different woods and stuff available and stuff like that. You can see the tree farm just in there. So uh, yeah, it's pretty much a beast of a farm, which I gotta say, I don't really use that much. It's rare that I ever use this. I've got a habit of really going out and gathering the wood. It's kind of just if I'm in a bit of a rush and I need a bit of wood, I come down here and I AFK for a while because this thing eats through tons of bone mills. So sometimes it's just, it's just easier to go to somewhere and chop it all down manually. And if we head outside here, we start to head into town. So as we come around here, we've got this cool little builder just here. Again, no interior in there just yet, but we do have a little pumpkin stall at the side. We have another little market stall over here. A stall over here selling a bunch of wood from the wood farm. We have a little well, a little cart, and then some storage underneath this shelter here. And then, of course, we have the storage system. But before we do that, let's head upstairs because, yes, we actually have an interior. See, I do make them sometimes. So in here, we got a little kitchen. We got a little balcony just on the outside here. You know, pretty simple, but it does the job. And then over here, we have got ourselves a little bookshelf. We've got a fireplace, a little sofa, a table and just a few little details and bits and bobs around and then of course if we head upstairs we have the bedroom which is pretty cozy down here we have got the storage system which is absolutely awesome i love this system so if we come inside here we can go ahead and just throw any blocks in here and that will automatically sort everything out into the storage system so I've tried to organize it the best I can. Over this side, we've got all of our wooden blocks. So the logs, the strip logs, the planks, stairs, slabs, and fences. And of course, that is for all the different variants as well. This section is a little bit of a mix. So down here, we've got all of our natural blocks. So all the blocks that only have four blocks, no stairs or slabs. And then down here, we've got all of our seeds and crops. That leads into all of our colored dyes. Then we've got the colored concretes, the wall, the terracotta, and the stained glass. So quite a lot of stuff down this aisle, but it kind of makes sense to me at least. This section is for all of our foliage, so saplings, leaves, flowers, and all that kind of stuff. In the center here, we've got an axolotl aquarium, although for some reason in here, since 1.21, the axolotls just, uh, they don't really do much. They don't really swim around. They kind of look a bit bored, to be honest. But um, yeah, they've only been doing that since we updated to 1.20. So not really sure what that's all about. And down here, we get a much better view of the tank, which I got to say does look really cool. I just wish those axolotls would swim around a little bit because uh, it would just make it look so much better. 
And down here, we got a bunch more items. So down this side, we've got all of our precious items, redstone. And then down here are just like common drops, like mob drops and things that we gather regularly. So things like coal, clay, bricks, books, paper, feathers, leather, nuggets and slime, mob drops and all that kind of stuff. You know, so just those common kind of drops that we tend to make use of. This section down here is probably one of the biggest. So on this side, I've got cobblestone and then stone. This is just because we get a lot of cobblestone and stone. So this is just to fill up the kind of mass storage. But then from here, we have the blocks, stairs and slabs. And if we turn around, we've got the stone, blocks, stairs and slabs, stone bricks, mossy, polished, granite, granite, and... Uh, What's this one called again? Diorite. If I've got it for a minute. Then the andesite and so forth. All the way down. So we've got all of our four blocks, stairs and slabs down here. And then down this section, we have all the blocks from the nether. So just basically everything that we would get from the nether. You can find it down this section here. So next up, I think it's time we take a look at the city. So as we come around this little walkway down here, we've got this epic tower just at the side here with a nice big tree. And I gotta say, I just love the view you get as you come walking up this little hill here. It just looks so cool. And before we go and see, let's just take a quick look here. Look at this view of this tower and this little bridge. It looks so cool as you come out here. This is actually gonna be part of the castle. So later on, this will be, well, there'll be a lot more building up here. Um, but yeah, this is gonna be where the castle is gonna start. And it's gonna literally go all the way over to the other side of the mountain. So it's gonna be pretty huge. Heading in the city here, I wanted to make this a little bit different. So I wanted to have kind of like a centerpiece, if you like. And I think this fountain here works great. I really do like the design here. Um, the one thing is, it is quite tall. And I'm wondering if I should make it smaller so that we get a nice view of the tower behind as we come walking in. So let me know what you guys think. Should I make this smaller or do you think it's good being the size it is as we come walking in? Because this is where we come walking through as we enter. So I'm in debate whether to make it a bit smaller, but let me know what you guys think in the comments. Now, over the side here, we have got the tavern and this has got a nice interior inside. On the outside, we've got a couple of benches on this side, a little bench on this side with a few trees. So we got some nice details. In here, we have got the bar. So we've got some lager, some ale, and of course some Guinness. We can play some music over here. We got some chairs to sit down and chill, a nice little fireplace. And then if we come upstairs, we've got a little seating area. This is more for just sitting down for the restaurant, I guess, where you might come and have some food. And then if we head actually back down this side, there is actually this little door here, which brings us onto this cool little balcony. We have a few seats on the outside. It's simple, but it does the job. And then if we go back around here, we can go upstairs again. This brings us to the kitchen, and as you can see, eat, sleep, repeat. So over here, we've got the little kitchen area, a little sink, some food, a few shelves, just a few little details uh, just to make it stand out. We've got a little brewing stand up here, a bunch of cookbooks, a little barrel with some drink, a cake, and then just a few little details down here. And then, of course, upstairs, we've just got a bunch of storage. Nothing too crazy, just uh, a bunch of resources and materials that the kitchen might need at some point. Let's head outside and take a look at the brewery next. So this is, again, one of my favorite builds. I really love this one. The way that it sits on an angle is just really cool. But one of my favorite features is just the way that it comes off the path here. And then you get kind of cornered into this section here. It just adds a really nice detail and I don't know what it is about this one, but yeah, I definitely love this one a lot. Now, if we head over to the factory itself, as you can see inside, we've got the ale in a big massive tank here. So this is all being brewed up and then pumped into these tubes across here and then into these pots down here as well. And then some of them are put into the kegs. Some of them are stored here for deliveries or poured into barrels and stuff. And then over this side here, we got a little kind of uh, kind of a little bit of a storage area and a little testing area to make sure everything is all as it should be. And then if we come upstairs, we kind of got a bit of the same here where we've got the tank here filling up all of the pots, 
a little work area over here again i don't really know what it is just to try and make it look sort of fitting with the factory and then a bit of a boiler over here making sure to keep the ale at the right temperature so yeah i think this one turned out really cool probably one of my favorite builds in the town so far i think this is probably one of my favorites so just uh i don't know there's something about this one that i really like next up we have this gatehouse and i gotta say this one turned out really cool um it's a bit of a different build so we've got this kind of peaked sort of point of a roof at the top here and then it goes into a kind of tower so it's really different but i think it works really well for this area and works especially well for the gatehouse so yeah i think this again was a really cool addition then we've got this build and i gotta say i do love this build i love the colors i love the design but i cannot work out in my head what i want this one to be i just can't come up with an idea that feels right so you guys have given me some good suggestions but i don't know i still can't make my mind up yet so again if you have any ideas what we could turn this build into please let me know in the comments we have got this really nice little garden outside so maybe we could use that as a feature towards what this could be um the garden itself is actually really cool one of the things i like most about this is the use of the campfires as a kind of trellis it just kind of makes the garden feel a little bit more private almost like it's sectioned off from the road and everything so yeah i just think it adds a nice little feature over here we got the gatehouse that we came into and then we got this cool little build to the side here which again i'm still working out what to do with the interior over here we've got a bit of a wall collector a little cart a few details of like a little garden down the side here a big gatehouse that leads us down to the industrial area and then to the side here we have the blacksmith now this is a really cool little build which also has some stables on one side a tower at the back and then this house at the back as well so again this house at the back here doesn't have an interior as yet but we'll get to that a bit later on inside here for the interior of the blacksmith we've got a little work area over this side some anvils a few weapons on display we got some armor stands which i've still got to put some armor on i did forget that in last episode then we got another work area we've got this little fireplace here which is probably a good place for heating up weapons and iron so that they can be banged into shape and then over in the corner here we've got a little storage room just for a bunch of resources and storage for general items and bits and bobs so yeah i think this one works out pretty cool the stables over here also have a little area around the back so if we take a look just inside here there is a storage area so again i will be working on something to go in there very soon heading outside this gate here brings us down to the industrial area and the first build that we come up to here is the coal plant now this is a really cool build but i still have to do the interior on this one just yet my idea is to build it so that it looks like we have a couple of lifts going all the way down to bedrock and then we'll have a bunch of tunnels going off in different directions where they could be gathering up the coal and bringing it up to the surface we'll have a huge storage area here with this conveyor belt being connected and that will be sending all of the coal down into a warehouse which is located just down there you can see the uh, conveyor belt is going all the way down We've got all these supports here and these belts that are working down into the system as well so they connect inside there where they have the pulleys that's what rotates uh the links at the very top there and then pulls will, will be what pulls the lifts up um obviously it won't be working for real but we'll make it look like it does now on the outside here we have got actually a little doorway just there so if we come around this side here and we'll have to just jump up for the moment we can come down here and this leads us to a little walkway this way over here leads us to this little house so inside here i don't know maybe this could be a tea room or something storage room i don't really know just yet but we've got a little room just there and then over this side here is where we've got the coal warehouse so all the coal comes down here and gets stored inside there and if i come over here we can just about crouch underneath perfect and then inside here we will open up the doors and we'll have a bunch of stuff going on inside here not sure exactly what yet but we will do something and then down here we just have a few little details a few trees 
a tunnel that goes nowhere, a little warehouse, well, not a warehouse, a little storage house. And then down here, we've got this little conveyor belt that brings the coal out and then dumps it onto these carts here. They go along on the train track. At some point, I will extend this and make it look like it goes somewhere and maybe even add a train to the front of this. Um, but again, I'll get to that at some point. Then if we go through here, this leads us around to the docks. So let's quickly just walk around so uh, you can see where everything connects. So from here, if we walk all the way around down this side here, then we come up to another warehouse here. As we come here, that's the bottom of our stairway. So if we continued around that swirly stairway from the gate up by the city, that brings us down to here. And if I head back on myself, you can see we have a crane over on the corner here. We've got a bunch of coal all stored up, ready to go onto a ship. Now there will be a ton of ships and stuff that I will be building around here at some point. Down here we have a little docks for them all to come and get loaded up. So we've got a little dock area for all of them. Then if we come back upstairs here, we do have this little stairway over here. This takes us up to the wool farm, which we built, was it last episode, I think? Or the episode before is one or the other. Um, so in here, we've got all of the sheep farms for all the different colored walls. And this one is connected down into the ground into a water system, which connects to the storage system. So anything that these uh, that these farms gather, all of the items that get dropped, they all go straight into our storage system with everything else, which is pretty cool. And then we just got a couple of little work areas to look like the wall is being turned into like carpet and banners. So yeah, it's just detailing, but I think it looks pretty cool in here. And if we head back downstairs and turn this way, we can now go down the stairs here. Over there is our stairway that takes us up back to the city. So if we come back down here, we have a little storage area down here and a few little docks and details. So nothing too much, just a little detail more than anything else. And if we follow this all the way around, that will bring us to the smelter factory, which is just inside this building just here, which I got to say, this is probably another really cool build. I do like the way this one turned out. We got all these little pipes and stuff connected, which just adds to the detail. On the inside, we've got a 26 furnace array, which is pretty cool. We've got our chest over here where all of our drops go. Pull this lever to turn on the carpet duper, which fills up all of the furnaces with fuel. And then over here, we have got a chest, so, uh, not chest, the minecart that fills up all of the furnaces with the item you want to smelt. Just pull the lever and then away you go. Plus, we also have a little crafting area over here and then a storage area for bamboo because upstairs we have got a pretty simple little bamboo farm. I will be creating a much better version a bit later once we get the um, the auto crafter. But for now, we've just got a little farm over here. And then, of course, a few little machines here just to make it look like it's working and maybe compressing bamboo into bamboo blocks and stuff, which I thought was pretty cool. Around the back here, we do have a little doorway, which again brings us back up to this landing here that takes us up to the city. So let's head over this way and then underneath this little archway, if we come around here, we do have a little warehouse in here. Again, this still needs to have some storage put in here for now. It's uh, I was temporarily using this when I was doing some building. Outside here, we got a car and some storage. We got this building here, which I don't know what I'm going to do with just yet. I'll probably build a farm in there of some sorts. And then over here, we have a little room so this again could be a little warehouse or a little storage area and then we follow this all the way back down here this would just bring us around to where the um where the super smelt is and then around this side we have a little stairway walk up here and it brings us up to this little area again here so just so you guys can see the way around here in here, we have got our jelly factory, which again is another one of my favorite builds. I love this one. We got this conveyor belt on the side here. So jelly is being pumped up from the farm downstairs. It's being plopped onto here and then coming across this little kind of uh, conveyor belt. We've got a little area for storage, just a few little details just to make it look a little bit like a factory. Down here, we got all the storage for our slime, which comes up from the farm. We got 
These little compressors here, which are squishing the slime and pumping it into these little pots here. So turning it into jelly, if you like, which I thought was pretty cool. Over the back here, we have got this area here. So this is where the um, slime is all being pumped up from the farm all the way around into this big tank just over here. I think I might change the slime out for lime wall. I think it might look better, especially if we add a bit of light in. It might just make it look a little bit more green. Um, I don't know if I really like the lights shining all the way through and kind of just shining straight through the um, slime because you can't really see the slime in there, even though it is. So, yeah, I think I might change that, but we'll see. So you see what happens for now. But down here, this leads us to the actual slime farm. So we go down just a few floors. And then once we get to the bottom, we have access to a little walkway. And that brings us up to the actual farm. So just in here, you can see we've got the actual farm, um, which is pretty cool. And then we can just go in here to go AFK. And again, let's take a little look from a distance at all of the factories and a part of the city, which is going to be built up a lot more very soon. Um, and then over there, we can just about see the steins of the cave and our little island build. So yeah, it's shaping up pretty cool. And over here, we have our mob farm and our raid farm. And the pretty cool thing here is I can use the raid farm here at the same time as the mob farm is running. And we can kind of kill two birds with one stone. So I can get a ton of XP and emeralds and stuff like that. At the same time that the mob farm is running and gathering me a whole bunch of drops. I mean, you can see, you know, we get plenty of mob spawn on there, getting plenty of drops. So usually by the time I finished sort of um, with the raid farm, I'll go over here and have a look and there'll be tons of drops in there. So yeah, this one works really cool. And I just have one more farm to show you, which is of course the Enderman farm. I mean, this farm is just super handy for gaining tons of XP and repairing tools. So yeah, this one is a must farm. And finally, let's tour the zoo. I know a bunch of you guys have been waiting for this. So let's take a good old look and check this place out. So heading up to the entrance here, you can see we've got a bunch of details on the outside with trees, bushes, leaves and all that. And then the entrance itself here, I think is pretty cool. I was going for a kind of woodland zoo effect. And I think this looks really cool. I really do like the way that it sort of looks. Over here, we've got a little booth on each side, an entranceway through the center. And if we head on over here, just to the left, we do have this little kind of garden area or seating area. Maybe we could turn this into a little cafe where people could get something to eat before they head on their journey around the, um, around the zoo. And the enclosures over here are pretty simple. So inside here, we've got the chickens with a nice little chicken coop and just a few details. They can actually walk straight through. I don't know if we'll see one walk through, but they can walk all the way through there. I think this guy's going to go. There he goes. So yeah, cool little detail for that one. Then we've got our piggies over in this little section here. Again, nothing too much, just a few details in the ground and then a little shelter over the back here. Um, yeah, but I think this one looks pretty cool. And then further along, we've got our sheep. So in here, we've got a few sheep. We've got a nice little barn for them to go and lay down in the shade. And a few hay bales and just a few details. A little wheat field at the back there. So yeah, this one was pretty cool as well. And then just behind me, we do have our wolf enclosure, which is pretty cool. I did have to remove the dripstone because it was killing the wolves. So I had to replace a couple. But overall, I think this one is pretty cool with the little pond in the middle with a little bridge coming across. A little kind of uh, cave here for them to sleep in. And then just a bunch of details to decorate the pen. So... Yeah, I think this one turned out really nice. Next up, we have my favorite enclosure, which is the panda enclosure. And I gotta say, this one is just so cool. It's full of colors and lush greens and, you know, the bright, vibrant colors. I love this little um, Tory gate in the center here as well. I think it looks really cool. And yeah, overall, I just think this is probably my favorite one so far. So out of all of the enclosures I built, although I do love the power enclosure as well, but I think this one is my favorite. Just behind the panda enclosure, we have the rabbit enclosure. And I got no idea why, but these guys keep getting stuck on the glass here. And also at the back there between the fences. 
But no matter what I do, they stay stuck. So there's no point in me even trying to fix it or get them out because they just get stuck again. So yeah, we just have to leave that as it is. But in here, we've got a little carrot field, a few details, some trees, a little shelter for them to sleep. So yeah, this one's a pretty cool little one as well. Further along, we have got the donkeys and the mules. So these are mixed into one cage here, which I think is pretty cool. And over there, you can't quite see it probably, but there is a little lake just behind there, or a little pond rather. You've got a few mules in here, a few donkeys, a little, little kind of barn, so like a little sheltered area, and then just a bunch of greenery and stuff like that. So yeah, again, another cool little enclosure. Next up, we have the cow enclosure, which again is pretty simple. We've got some hay bales, a bunch of leaves and details, a little shelter. Not too much really with this one. And then again, over here, we've got the mushroom cow. So we've got some custom mushrooms, a nice big brown mushroom, some red mushrooms, and then mycelium to match the biome with a few little details just to kind of make it blend with the environment a little bit nicer. So yeah, I think these ones have turned out pretty cool as well. Further along, we have got the foxes. Again, a nice little enclosure in here. We've got a little cave for them to sleep in, some bushes, some berries, and just a bunch of details to make it look like their natural habitat. And next up, we have the ocelot enclosure, which is pretty cool. This one kind of looks a bit like a jungle. So we've got a bunch of bamboos, some jungle trees, a little cliff edge on this side, some melons, and just a bunch of leaves and details. So yeah, this one's another cool little enclosure. Now behind me here, we can run around this side here and also run around this side. It kind of circles the parrot pen. So we can go all the way around. We can see all the enclosures as we come around. And then this brings us back to the front of the enclosure. Inside here, we've got a few parrots. So we've got a green one, a blue one, a red one, a gray one and another green one up there. I am gonna bring a few more over here, but just let them roam wildly. I'm not gonna tame them as pets, but this is a really nice enclosure. Again, it's full of colors, so loads of flowers in here, and then just loads of leaves to make it sort of um, a little bit more lush like the jungle. So lots of greenery and bamboo and stuff, which I think turned out really cool. So again, this is probably another one of my favorite enclosures, um, but I think the panda one is my favorite. This is my very close second. To the side of the parrot enclosure, we've got this walkway, and this brings us up to a few more enclosures. So up here, we have got the bees, the alleys, the cats, and the polar bears. So starting with the bees over here, we've got a nice enclosure in here, all done with glass so you can see through, and yeah, just a bunch of greenery and a few hives, a few trees and stuff like that in there. Nothing too crazy. Then we move along to the alleys, a little bit of a weird one to add to a zoo. They're not exactly an animal, but they are a passive mob. So I felt like they kind of fitted in the area. So I just went with a little kind of magical cage in here. Um, so maybe we can imagine them as blue flying monkeys or something. Um, I don't know, but yeah, it's a pretty cool little enclosure. Next up, we have the cats. And in here, I do have four tamed cats, but I think again, I'm gonna add some wild cats just to roam around in here. Um, hopefully we can get maybe all nine variants. Um, so I will see what I can do with that. But again, in here, just a bunch of greenery, a few of these little sort of podiums that they could jump across, and then a little stairway over the back. And then other than that, just a bunch of greenery just to make it look nice. And on this side, we have the polar bears, which is pretty cool. We've got a few trees in here to kind of make it look nice. And then we've got the blue ice at the back with the nice snowy cave, which kind of fits really nicely with the theme for the polar bears. So I like this one as well because it kind of dips down into this little cave down below rather than being up on the eye level. So I think this one was really cool. And yeah, it just went with something different, which fitted in really nice. Over this side, we have the aquarium. And I gotta say, I love this big octopus that I built on the outside here. Don't know what, what made me think to do this, but I just love the design. I think it is so cool. And then we enter by coming into its mouth. And before we take a look at all the aquarium animals, let's just head around the side here. Cause there's a few animals that I think a few people missed and didn't see me add. And that was these ones just here. So we've got a cool little llama enclosure and 
I'll tell you what, guys, I cannot even tell you how far I traveled to find these guys. It was absolutely ridiculous. Um, but I did get there in the end. And then we've got a few mountain goats. Some of them are hiding. But yeah, we got these in here. And there is a glass roof on this one because these guys have got a lethal jump on them, meaning that they could literally just jump out and run wherever they want. And then over here, of course, we have got the horses. Again, a nice simple enclosure here with a little shelter, some water. So yeah, we've got all of those enclosures there. I will be extending this path so it goes up and then maybe we'll have a sniffer enclosure, a camel enclosure, maybe an armadillo enclosure for 1.21 and any other new mobs that come along the line as well. Back inside the aquarium, we've got the frog enclosure. So we've got all three variants of the frogs. We've got the orange, the green. Uh, we've got the white just hiding at the back there as well. So yeah. Nice little enclosure in here, simple, but I try to make it look a little bit like a swamp. Then over in this corner here, we have got the squids and the glow squids. Um, I've only got two glow squids in here. I, I did have four, but I lost two of them getting them here. And it was such a mission trying to get them into this cage. So I just left it at two for now, but I will get another two at some point later on. But yeah, this one is pretty simple. Nothing too much to really explain in here. In here we have the dolphins, although we don't have the dolphins anymore because dolphin AI is pretty messed up. So if you leave the area, they stay under the water and they don't come up for air because there is like a two block air gap at the top of this. Uh, you can't really see it too well from down here, but there is a two block air gap. And for some reason, they, when you leave the area, they stay under the water. They, they don't come back up. So when you come back into the area, uh, they drown. So it's a bit of a pain, but it is what it is. So until they fix the dolphins AI, there's no point in me adding them back in there. So for now, we just have a nice big coral aquarium. So take a look at all the wild corals. Anyway, moving on, we also have the fish enclosure. So in here, I've literally got a ton of the tropical fish, the cod and the salmons. So I probably haven't got all variants of the tropical fish. I know there is a lot of variants. Um, and honestly, I do not even know how I would even tell if I had them all or not. <laughs> but there is a lot. So I didn't bother collecting them all, but we have got a whole bunch in there. Further along, just round here, we also have the puffer fish. And I did keep these guys separate because we know what they're like. They blow up and then once they puff up, they kill all the other fish. So, uh... Yeah, for now they have an aquarium of their own. We also have our turtle enclosure for Leonardo, Donatello and Raphael, uh, which is pretty cool. And it looks like we've also gained a few fish in here as well, uh, which have naturally spawned. That wasn't me putting them in there. But yeah, this one looks pretty cool. Just a couple of little beach islands. There's another turtle up there, some trees and just minor details, really. A little bit of coral in the water. And that's about it really for this one. We've also got the axolotls and in here, the axolotls actually swim around. As you can see, they're swimming around like crazy. So I don't really know why they won't swim around inside the aquarium in my storage room, but these ones do and then ones don't. So a little bit strange. Anyway, in here, I've kind of made it look a little bit like a sort of lush cave of sorts. And then a bit of water in here, just a little bit further detailed, some dripstone. And yeah, I think this one turned out really cool. And finally, another passive mob, but not really an animal, is the Strider. And for some reason, these guys don't want to stand in the lava. They would rather freeze at the side of the lava. So I don't know what that's all about. The AI is not picking up the lava or whatnot. So um, yeah, but we've got four Striders in here and uh, doing a little dance now or having a little kiss. You guys kissing? Looks like it. Anyway. We got a nice little nether biome in here, a bit of a warped forest, some lava, and then just a few little vines and bits around here just to make it look a bit more matching to their biome. So yeah, I think it turned out really cool. And for those of you that did stick around, this world is going to be available for download to my patrons and channel members. So be sure to keep an eye out for that. But until next time, have a good one.